All right, good evening, everyone. Thank you for coming to our public information session on the upcoming referendum that will appear on the November 5th ballot here in the city of Fitchburg. My name is Chad Brecklin, and I serve as the city administrator for Fitchburg. And in my role as city administrator, I'm responsible for the day-to-day -day operations of the city and for implementing the policy directions of the mayor and the common council. During our time this evening, we'll plan to walk through some slides uh, that provide an overview of the city's challenges, the referendum itself, and the impacts a vote for or against the referendum will entail. Following that presentation, we'll have time for questions and answers. And it is my hope that you walk away from today's discussion with answers to any questions you might have and that you feel informed heading into the ballot uh, booth this fall. Prior to beginning the presentation, I want to acknowledge the elected officials that we have with us today. Uh, Mayor Arata Frada is here. Anything you want to add before we get started at all? I'll grab this mic up front. Maybe. There we go. And it's on. There you go. Thank you, Chad. So, well, that's a, I will say thank you for coming. <laughs> Uh, so we are here because uh, the council decided to uh, authorize the city to move forward with the referendum. And one of the things that I want to say is that we didn't take this uh, lightly. We have been working with this referendum from since June 2023. So um, we have done our uh, due diligence about informing the resident about this referendum. We sent a survey uh, in February, March. Uh, to all of the residents uh, to ask for feedback about the referendum. We got the feedback, and this is what we are moving forward. So now um, city staff, uh, the city administrator, is, will uh, explain why we need to go to a referendum and go in detail about what are the things this referendum will cover. So thank you. Thank you, Mayor. I'd also like to introduce Alder Joe Maldonado, District uh, 1. Alder, anything you want to add at all? Um, thank you to this huge crowd for coming. Um, I just wanted to say, um, you know, as an elected official, I, I, you know, we've all been part of a lot of these meetings and um, just breaking down the, the serious need in the city for a referendum. I think our city has um, done a tremendous job of managing our finances and um, uh, really being good stewards of our resources. However, um, the city's growing and um, the biggest need of a city is staff. And uh, as um, Administrator Breckman will talk about later, um, we have large needs um, in public safety as well as uh, in transportation. And uh, I, you know, I, I don't think we're allowed to say what our stances are on the referendum, but you, I think you can tell it from watching council meetings um, where I stand. So I'm uh, looking forward to the presentation and engaging. Thank you, Alder Maldonado. All right, so you guys, am I in the way of the slides? Are you able to see those? All right, excellent. So what's this all about? Uh, the city of Fitchburg has identified a need for additional funding to increase staffing and, investing service and invest in services to meet the increasing needs of our growing community. This is a topic, as the mayor mentioned, that we've been exploring as a community for many months, uh, dating back to June of 2023. Uh, an, op an options assessment was released earlier this year as well as a community-wide survey uh, that had been mailed to Fitchburg households in uh, the spring of this year. As we have shared along the way, uh, with the city of Fitchburg as a growing community, the demand for city services, including our public safety and other municipal services, such as infrastructure and maintenance, has also increased. In the chart you see here uh, is one measure of growth for the city. Uh, between 2013 and 2023, Fitchburg's population has increased uh, nearly 34%. Uh, for context, our growth significantly outpaces that of the state of Wisconsin, which over that time period has been approximately 3%. Uh, that is depicted, uh, the population growth is depicted by the green line in the slide or bar graph. And the blue line that is below that is the percent change in city staffing over that time. And the percent change in city staffing during that same time frame is just about uh, just under 19% uh, in uh, staffing increases. Uh, so 34% population growth, 18%, 19% staff growth. 
So we'll first start by looking at our public safety services. Between 2013 and 2022, the City of Fitchburg's Fire Department calls for service increased by nearly 40%. And as the number of calls have increased, the number of part-time paid on premises staffing has declined, which has also resulted in the average response time increasing also. Longer response times can also be attributed uh, in part to increased reliance on mutual aid. And when mutual aid is required, neighboring communities will provide a response until our Fitchburg Fire Department staff can get there. And obviously when fire response or any other response comes from a neighboring community, it is going to take longer than it would if it were coming from one of our firehouses. Additional funding is needed to increase base wages for our part-time paid on call or paid on premise fire staff to approximately $15 per hour. Uh, that would be the minimum hourly rate when they are first hired and they would have the ability to increase that rate by obtaining uh, additional training and certification. Along the same lines of our uh, fire department, uh, calls for service have also increased in our police department between 2013 and 2022, uh, approximately 23%. With the increase in calls for service, it becomes increasingly challenging to meet our public safety responses with the li limited uh, full-time staff that is currently available. One of the things that our police department has done in order to address its staffing needs is it applied for a federal uh, grant from the Department of Justice. Uh, they were awarded that grant, which uh, at this point in time could temporarily fund three additional police officers to be added to our department. Uh, the temporary funding would last for three years and would cover approximately one third of the cost of those three police officers. Uh, without the additional funding that this referendum uh, would provide, it is quite likely that the police department will need to turn down that grant and not be able to hire those uh, three police officers using the grant funding. One of the other items that we have in this referendum is uh, operating costs associated with a new police services building. Uh, the city has been planning for a new police services building since 20. 15 when a space needs study was uh, released. That study took a look at uh, not only the needs of our space needs of our police department, but also the space needs of City Hall as a whole, and uh, had identified that there are clearly space needs not just in the police department, but also within City Hall. Uh, for reference, uh, the City Hall houses our police department and uh, city staff moved into that building in 1999. So we're looking at a, roughly a 25-year-old uh, building at this point in time. So the funding in this referendum will allow the city to operate the building, which would include hiring a full-time custodian who can cover maintenance response uh, and custodial duties, as well as uh, the operating costs would cover maintenance expenses and would also build a small reserve uh, that would prepare uh, for building system replacement or other uh, repairs that might be necessary uh, in coming years. With a growing community, we're also seeing increased pre uh, pressure on our traffic and roadways and an increased need and request for our transit services. Increased funding uh, in the referendum for our transit system will allow the city to invest in enhanced transit paratransit service, uh, which is something we currently do not have, and that paratransit service uh, will exist within a one half mile of the routes that uh, could be enhanced. And the main factor in uh, seeking to invest in our transit would be improving access between our residential areas, our job centers, and city facilities such as City Hall, the Senior Center, and the library. The ultimate decision on what transit services could be enhanced will lie with our common council, uh, but ultimately uh, we anticipate that whatever decision is made, uh, the transit improvements will enhance the connectivity among the areas in which I just mentioned. So one thing that I wanna point out is we're at a referendum uh, not because of irresponsible financial management. The city of Fitchburg and its common council has been a careful steward of the funding that is uh, allowed to be collected through our tax levy. They always strive to, strive to make the most out of the budget dollars that are available. And at this point, 
the needs of our community and the costs associated with addressing those needs have far outpaced the city's current funding capacity and additional dollars are needed to hire public safety, uh, city hall staff, and address other growing operating costs and investments in transit. Costs have increased due to factors uh, including the cost to retain and recruit our talented and professional service-oriented team members, inflationary pressures on the cost of equipment, supplies, materials, and other operating costs, again, all in an effort to maintain the existing high level of service that our community appreciates. So what's the ask? Uh, the ask is, in order to address the challenges that we've discussed briefly this evening, is uh, a ballot referendum on November 5th that will ask Fitchburg voters whether or not they support a $3,593,000 $3 ,590, increase in property tax levy going forward to fund five sworn police positions, six firefighters, three additional city staff positions, police services building operating costs, improvements to public transit, and other city operating costs. It is important to note that this is a one-time permanent increase to the property tax levy if it is approved. It is not a referendum that is, is building, so to speak, so that 3.5 would be added every single year in the future. It's a $3.59 million one-time permanent increase. So you may be thinking to yourself, why a referendum to fund these solutions? While our ability to respond to changes in the demand for services is restricted by state legislation, limiting our property tax uh, levy increases primarily to the percent increase in equalized value from net new construction. Growth is really what is funding our ability to maintain existing services at this point in time. And the allowable increases based on our net new construction alone are insufficient to meet increasing needs of the growing community. In order to exceed state-imposed levy limits, the city must seek approval to do that via referendum. And as mentioned um, earlier in the presentation, also by Mayor Rana Frada, this has been a, uh, a consideration and discussion that's been taking place for uh, 15 or so, 16 months at this point in time. So why now? Well, like many Wisconsin communities, growing needs and expenses have outpaced the city's ability to hire staff and make investments to fund solutions. And in order to invest in staffing and fund our growing operations, costs uh, and operating costs necessary to maintain or to improve existing services, additional funding is required. So here's the question that's on the ballot for November 5th. And uh, I'll give you a moment to read it over. Uh, the Department of Revenue requires that this is the question language. We do not have any ability to change the language to make it perhaps more clear or easier to read. This is required language from the Department of Revenue. And uh, after you've had a chance to read it, uh, in the next few slides, we'll talk about what it means. So on these slides, you'll see a preview of where the ballot, I'm sorry, where the referendum question will be on our ballot. So with which Fitchburg, we have multiple school districts. Uh, you will see on the left is the ballot for those residents who are not in the Madison Metropolitan School District. And the referendum question will appear on the second side or the back side of the ballot right there at the top. And then for residents who reside within the Madison Metropolitan School District, they will see the ballot that is on the right-hand side. Uh, also, we'll locate the referendum question on page two or the back side of the ballot and also in the upper left-hand corner. If Fitchburg voters approve the referendum, the city will institute a one-time permanent $3,593,000 increase to the property tax levy 
beginning with property tax bills issued in December of 2024. This would translate to a property tax increase of approximately $65.20 per $100,000 in assessed value. The impact to a medium Fitchburg home valued at $457,800, which is the uh, median uh, assessed value for a single family home in Fitchburg currently, that's estimated to be uh, just under $300 annually and just under $25 per month. So people provide services and we need people in order to provide those services. Uh, our budget is made uh, up largely of personnel costs. Uh, nearly two thirds of our budget uh, is entirely personnel costs. So our ability, city's ability to address community priorities uh, continues to be limited by the staffing capacity available. The city turned to Baker Tilly to perform an organizational and operational review of the city and required department heads to review current and projected future workloads. Uh, that was done last year. Uh, these efforts uncovered a need for more than 50 additional city staff members in the coming years. We're not here to ask for 50 staff members. We know that that's not anywhere near the realm of possibility. So we had to focus on those with the highest priority. If approved, the city will have the funding necessary to address increased demand for public safety services, including hiring five sworn police positions, which includes specific, specifically three police officers, one sergeant and one lieutenant, and six firefighters. The additional staffing in the police department will allow them to assign a full array, full array of staff to the third shift and fully cover peak service hours. It will also ensure the city's ability to accept the federal grant funding that I had mentioned earlier. Hiring the six additional full-time firefighters will help maintain and improve uh, the city's ability to respond to emergencies in a timely manner and addressing staffing vacancies caused by decreasing volunteer or part-time uh, staff availability and assist in reducing the overtime and the over-reliance that is currently needed on our existing career staff in order to fully staff two engines 24 hours a day, seven days a week. Uh, thereby, we'll be improving the reliability of our staffing levels uh, by having approximately 75% of those annual uh, shift coverage hours needed for those two engines to be staffed with full-time career staff. Uh, currently, uh, we're trending at about 40% of that uh, time is currently staffed by our full-time career firefighters, uh, which is an, an improvement in the last couple of years due to some uh, increases in fire department staffing. In addition, funding approved by the referendum will allow the city to pay our part-time uh, paid on call, paid on premises firefighters, a minimum hourly rate of approximately $15 per hour uh, with again the ability to increase that hourly rate based upon completion of training and certifications and help retain the existing staff and ideally attract new staff. In addition, the city would be able to hire a communications director, a human resources generalist, and a finance manager to improve the city's communication and transparency with our community. In improve and enhance our recruitment and retention efforts, uh, which impact the availability and quality of the services that we provide, anywhere from snow removal to parks maintenance and street maintenance. Uh, management of our financial operations of the city, including supporting our finance director and supporting our public works department uh, with grant applications, procurement efforts, sourcing and supply management and contract management. Right now, quite honestly, we have too many uh, engineers doing too much uh, finance related things. And this would be an opportunity for us to uh, take some of that burden off for engineers and also help our finance director uh, with some much needed capacity. Uh, the city will also be able to fund our police services building operations, uh, improve our transit and paratransit system and also uh, thereby improving our access with transit between our residential areas, our job centers, and city facilities, again, such as the senior center, city hall, and the library, and then uh, fund growing operating expenses. So when you look at this slide and you can see the breakdown of uh, exactly where the three point, nearly $3.6 million would go, about 52% of it will go to public safety staff. That's the 11 positions, five in the fire, uh, fire five in the police department and six in the fire department. 
Other city staff is about 11%. That was three total positions. Uh, so for a total uh, number of staff positions hired via this referendum would be 14. Uh, about 14% of this uh, referendum uh, would go to the police services building operating costs. Again, one of those components of those operating costs is the hiring of a full-time uh, building uh, custodian. Uh, about 10% of the referendum amount will go to improving our transit uh, services. And about $13,000 or $475,000 will be utilized for other uh, city operating expenses. That bucket, the last other operating, is the bucket in which the base rate increase in the part-time firefighters would come out of. And uh, for a point of reference, uh, we anticipate another potential uh, or likely candidate for this money would be uh, the increasing cost of salary uh, and benefits. 1% uh, cost of living adjustment uh, across the c all city employees equates to about $200,000 annually. So uh, that uh, there's, there's not a lot of money there, uh, to be honest with you. Um, but we felt that this was uh, based upon community feedback, conversations, uh, uh, and direction from the Common Council, that this dollar amount uh, seemed to be the most appropriate. Uh, one question that was asked in a prior uh, session was, how long do we think that this funding would last before we might be back at referendum in the future? And uh, we're estimating probably three to five years before we'll be back at referendum in the future, depending on a variety of factors, of course. Um, but our common council, I think, uh, felt very strongly that they did not want to ask for more money than what was needed at this point in time. Uh, obviously, there could have been an ask for five, seven, ten million dollars uh, that would have exceeded the length of time or uh, increased the length of time in which we would have uh, needed to come back for a referendum potentially. You know, could that have been five to ten years? Who knows? You know, um, but ultimately, uh, the Common Council made the decision that they did not want to um, ask for more money uh, to go deeper into the, uh, into the future uh, and wanted to, to really look at what was needed for the short term over the next three to five years um, and proceeded with that. So if the referendum is rejected by a majority of voters on November 5th, the city of Fitchburg is going to need to make difficult decisions about how to address increasing needs for public safety, things like parks and street maintenance, communications and other services, as well as growing challenges with staff recruitment and retention. Uh, the result of a, of a no vote uh, is likely going to lead to, uh, at best, a maintenance for the current funding for city staffing and, exist and existing services, uh, which obviously could inhibit our ability to employ and retain the quality staff that we have uh, currently, and it certainly will not allow us to improve or enhance uh, any of the city services at this point in time. And without the funding, uh, Fitchburg is, uh, it will be virtually impossible to hire the level of staff uh, that are outlined here in the, in the presentation. There are additional uh, information sessions coming up. Uh, the next one will be a, a uh, in-person session next Monday evening at 6 p.m. That'll be hosted at the City on a Hill Church, 2924 Fish Hatchery Road. October 9th at 12 p.m. Uh, will be another virtual public information session. We thought we'd give folks an opportunity to perhaps catch one live during their lunch hour if they were uh, so inclined. October 17th, <clears throat> excuse me, is another in-person information session. That'll be hosted at Fitchburg Fire Station number 3, 2950 South Sign Road. October 21st is the final in-person information session. That'll be hosted at the Four Winds Farm. 5735 Adams Road. And then the final public information session will be a virtual session October 28th at 6 p.m. With the in-person sessions, we uh, look to host one of them in each of the four aldermanic districts for point of reference. So as mentioned, the referendum will be on the ballots November 5th. Please uh, make sure to head to the polls that day and uh, cast your vote. 
The City of Fitchburg polling locations will be open uh, at 7 a.m. and will close at 8 p.m. and Wisconsin voters are required to show an acceptable form of photo ID in order to vote. Additional voting information including hours for in-person absentee voting and information about how to request an absentee ballot can be found in a couple of locations, one of which is the city's website and the second one is uh, myvote.wi.gov. So we will uh, transition away from the formal presentation to a question and answer uh, session. Uh, with any of our elected officials who are present, is there anything else you would like to add that I may not have covered during the presentation at all? Oh, yeah, and I will introduce Alder Allen, who is uh, here as well from District 3. Thank you. No? All right. So, any questions? Yeah. yeah. Can you explain, yeah. Chad, yeah. because I, have re I am receiving a lot of... Oh, I mean. Yeah, here, I'll give you this. There you go. Okay. Can you explain um, um, why, you know, we are, you know, people are seeing a lot of growth in the mm -hmm. city, a lot of, you know, development coming, housing. Um, I have received a couple of emails from people ask me, if you are, you know, we are getting, all, we are seeing all this development, you know, why do you need the money? And also, other question that they ask is, you know, you have been reval a revaluation of our homes. Mm -hmm. So why do you need the money? You know, you're going to have all this money for, you know, increases in taxes from sure. because of our revaluation. Can you explain why, um, you know, first of all, the revaluation, the, the, you know, what is the um, relation about revaluation mm -hmm. and taxes and how it's going to affect or how it's not affecting our ability to increase our revenues? And why that growth that we are experiencing is not enough to cover sure. our existing services. Yeah, yeah, I can do that. So I'll start with the uh, second part first uh, in regards to the revaluation and uh, increase in, in property tax values in the city. So we are required by state law to have our assessments within a certain percentage of fair market value. And as you can imagine, fair market value, particularly in, the, in, in Fitchburg and the Madison metropolitan area, uh, largely due to supply and demand, uh, has increased significantly over the last seven years, several years, and um, that has required us to reassess properties and revalue them, uh, oftentimes significantly higher than what they had been previously. Last year, for instance, I think the average assessed single-family single home was about 380, 385,000. Uh, you can see the most recent revaluation has increased that average single family home uh, to be just shy of you know, 500, 458,000. So fair market values are increasing in often cases 10, 15% a year. Assessments are required to generally follow suit with fair market value. Therefore, assessments have generally increased about 10% a year. Uh, what you've seen with the most recent two revaluation cycles uh, has been a, uh, a two-year period that's been covered in those. So for instance, uh, we just did one in 2024, and the uh, last one prior to that was 2022, and the one that had been done prior to 2022, I believe, was 2020 um, or even 2019. So those revaluations that were done also then effectively covered two calendar years and whatever that uh, recognition is of the fair market value that would have been uh, an increase over that uh, time since the last revaluation. And as folks probably recognize, uh, but sometimes there's a misconception out there that once a uh, property is increased in value, say by 20%, that property taxes are going to correlate to that and increase 20%, and that is not, not how it works. In the vast majority of cases, and particularly how it's worked for, for the Common Council and the financial decisions that they've made, the tax rate has actually decreased uh, as, a, as a relates to uh, assessed values, and that decrease in the tax rate has then basically roughly held city taxes, and again, just the city portion of the tax bill relatively flat over the last several years. Uh, so we haven't 
as a city collected significantly more revenue as it relates to the increase in the assessed value, we've been in, uh, increasing our, our, uh, our tax revenue due to the amount that we're allowed to based on the state imposed levy limits. That's a lot. It's complicated. I get it. I'm not an expert in assessments. I'm not an expert in finance. That's how I understand it. And um, uh, I believe that that's, that's at least the simplest way for me to be able to explain it. And then when we get to, to the uh, first part of the question is, with all the growth that Fitchburg has seen over the last several years, why do we need to, why do we need to have a referendum? Where's all that tax revenue going? Well, that's the net new construction. So net new construction, uh, using the example for the 2025 budget that we're working on right now, the net new construction that we're working off of is 2.9%, uh, which is just about three or four uh, tenths of a percent less than what inflation has been uh, the last 12 month period. A 2.9% or 3% net new construction allows the city to increase its property tax levy about $750,000. A 1% cost of living adjustment for city staff is about $200,000. Obviously, the cost of uh, benefits are increasing. The cost of other operating supplies, road maintenance, park maintenance, uh, cost to do services in the library, the senior center, uh, much like everyone's home budget, costs are increasing, and we recognize that, which again gets back to that point where our, our common council was looking at only requesting the amount that, that was uh, necessary to, to continue to uh, enhance uh, some existing services and uh, add some staff. But you can see just with that math, it doesn't go very far. And we're fortunate that we have growth. If we were in a com community that did not have any growth or had very little growth, I mean, look at a 1% net new construction, uh, which, you know, I, I speak with a lot of city administrators throughout the state, and it's not uncommon for them to state that their community has 1% or less of net new construction. 3% generally allows us to maintain the services that we're providing and allows us to provide a cost of living adjustment and address benefit uh, increases. A 1% net new construction, for instance, would give us about $250,000. We'd have maybe a small increase in cost of living, maybe be able to maintain the benefits, but ultimately we would be looking at some measure of service reduction, some measure of um, salary and or benefit changes. Uh, that's, that's the reality that we would be in if we didn't have three, you know, three percent net new construction, answer your question pretty good. Hopefully, excellent. Thank you. Other questions at all? Here, let me get you the mic. So my question is, what is Plan B? Public safety is obviously important to the city. From the fire department standpoint, we are at staffing levels back to 1971 when the fire department first started. So obviously the referendum passes, we get the six individuals, that's, that's a gain. But what happens if we don't get that? So what is plan B? Plan B is going to lead to a lot of difficult decisions for the Common Council. They're going to have to determine if there are any ways in which to increase revenue. Uh, there aren't many, but there are uh, a, a couple that are out there. Uh, but it certainly would not be revenue to the tune of $3.5, $3.6 million. That just does not exist. And um, without exorbitant, at least, impact fees and all of those things, I don't, and even then, I don't think it exists, to be honest with you. I don't think we would even have the authority or the council would have the authority to, to increase those that level. So uh, if there are other revenue sources available, I'm guessing the Common Council will look to potentially uh, tap those sources. 
uh, depending on what that yields. Uh, ultimately, what it probably means is in a best case scenario, city, existing city services will be maintained and existing staffing levels will be maintained. Uh, and in a worst case scenario, uh, any additional revenue will not be enough to, uh, combined with net new construction, will not be enough to maintain existing city services and could lead also to staff reductions. Um, all of those are preliminary at this point in time. Those are just broad-based uh, responses to the question and ultimately uh, there'll be a conversation, probably multiple conversations potentially uh, between city staff and the Common Council and ultimately the Common Council will have uh, some, some difficult policy directions uh, or decisions to, to be made. Other questions at all? No? All right, I will put up my contact information. So if anybody has any questions about the referendum, there are a few different uh, sources available. One, you can certainly email me or call me, and uh, my contact information is listed on the screen. Uh, the other uh, main uh, point of information available is on our website. We have a page dedicated to just the referendum, and you can see it there. If you go to our main page, uh, about halfway or third, uh, three quarters of the way down, you can see a little referendum tile near the center of the page. You click on that, and there'll be uh, a bunch of information. More is getting added by the day uh, in that section, and that is also translatable for anybody uh, who uh, would like to translate any of that information into a different language. Uh, you'll also begin to receive some direct mailers uh, with information. Uh, we anticipate that those will arrive uh, either late this week or early next week. And uh, that will also give you some additional information and or, uh, again, the contact information on where you can reach out if you have that. So with that in mind, uh, thank you to everyone uh, who came out to the session tonight. And uh, have a safe and enjoyable evening. Thank you.